<laughs> I can't see you with these on, but so everybody can hear me? Because I can, I can really yell. Um, all right, so UFO. How, just show of hands, anybody ever worked on it? So that's like half, half of everybody, so that's good. Um, it's a... Time out. Oh, gosh. <laughs> No, no, I want to get rid of that crap in the, in the, uh, yeah. Okay. okay, press on. Okay. Um, I use regular, my regular watercolor paints, it's just the, um, the paper is not paper, it's polypropylene, it's synthetic, um, it's archival, it does not warp, it doesn't buckle. Um, your paints do not dry lighter on it because it doesn't absorb into the paper. Um, you have a lot more mixing time because again, it doesn't absorb into the paper. Um, and it, uh, it does not dry 30% lighter. So pretty much the color you're painting with is the color you're gonna get. Um, the best part about it is that if you don't like it, this is funny, it's like I'm talking to nobody. <laughs> you all just <laughs> went away. Where'd you go? Um, anyway. What's really cool about it, and I like to, um, certain paints will push others away, and because they're suspended in water as they dry, they'll leave these interesting textures, textures depending on what their, their chemical properties. And I was terrible in science in high school, so I can't tell you why these paints don't interact, but I've seen it. So I know that it does it. Um, so a lot of times what I'll do is I have my basic blue Prussian, um, which I've I tried different blues from time to time, but this one I really need you like where the where you where you just where put that paper is. That's where we need. Do we? No. no. Where you just did that? There, yes. right there. There. <laughs> Sorry. Got it. Okay, we are moving over. All right, so here, this is X marks the spot. All right, so let me get this stuff out of the way. Okay. Um. what you've probably seen me do on the paper, yeah. the f underwater fish, and yeah, I've been doing this for a while, and you just, and every now and then you think, oh, I'm going to go nuts, I've got to try something different. So I um, started painting with the white background, and just like really having fun with the colors, and I don't know if I, um, no, I'm just saying if you can see like the different, if I hold this closer, worse? Okay. Anyway, the, there's different textures that happen uh, as these paints are kind of not mixing, semi-mixing. Um, and I was going to pass these around, but you can't see them because it's dark. <laughs> I mean, I, I was going to hand these around so you could see them closer up. Um, and then there's, you know, the koi, which are a lot of fun to paint. Um, I started doing these um, Umbrella scenes with the uh, in the rain with the reflections of the wet streets, and then also the florals are nice because you can just kind of focus in on the one uh, bloom and then have like this nice soft fuzzy background and you know they're just kind of fun to play with on a small sheet of paper. But if you want, I can. I don't know if you're going to be able to see them. Yeah, I think we can. Okay. Cute. So that's kind of um, the range of what I've been working with. Um, 
questions. How much is the paper cost? It's not that, it's kind of comp, I think it's actually a little less expensive than regular paper. Um, but you can get like the 25 sheet pack and it's like $3 a sheet plus shipping. Um, I live in South Jersey, so all of my art supplies come on the UPS truck. Um, we, don't, we don't have any art stores. Um, so I, go, I order through Cheap Joe's or Dick Blick. Um, they all carry, everybody carries it. So what I kind of, this is, right, this is in the right spot. What I want to do is just kind of show you the actual live thing with the action shot, as it were, of how these paints will push each other away. <coughs> So this is, um, when you find a favorite color that you really know you're going to go through a lot, Cheap Joe's carries a lot of the Winsor Newton and these 37 milliliter. They're, they're quite a good price for what you get compared to the smaller tubes. So I start with a lot of the Prussian blue, because that's kind of my base color. And just so that I have it all mixed, because otherwise it would be all over this palette of mine. Could you see your palette? It's kind of clean, kind of messy. So this is just, you know, kind of a milk consistency of Prussian blue and then if I put in um, alizarin crimson is kind of a color, it's kind of common. This starts to push things away and then of course the heavier, if you use heavier paint it has a more intense reaction but it just kind of bleeds and leaves like this nice soft edge. This is, um, this color is My Mary Blue, which is, um, or Green Blue. And this color is what I use a lot in the top of that painting on the easel, which you can't see because it's dark. <laughs> but uh, anyway, this, this color is, um, it's this one here, My Mary Blue. But this, this will actually, it really pushes everything out of the way. And I've learned to actually dilute it. Um, because if, if, I, if I thin it down, it doesn't have as much impact, but it still will push the, the Prussian away. Now the Prussian, when you push that down, is that the consistency of butter, melted butter? Oh, uh, like I'd say like milk consistency, not too thick. And the, and the others that you're putting in are, are have more water. They're um, a little bit thinner, yeah. They're thinner, so that's what makes it push it away? I think it's the, it's the chemistry. This other, these other paints are, um, I have a couple of the Daniel Smith uh, Earth Tones. One's Hematite, and this one's a G-O-E, Thite, or Guthite. I don't know, wasn't good in rock science either. I'm just proud I know that they're rocks. <laughs> so is this all just trial and error? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'll start a couple of these where I know like what colors I'm going to work with ahead of time. But like I'll do something like this just to, I don't want to have too many colors at once. But um, that was where I was just, I had added some new colors to my palette. And so I wanted to see what they would do. And that's the um, one of those Daniel Smith colors. But you know, just if if I want to get something like a light behind the dark, I can just throw some of these colors in and know that I'm going to get 
an interesting effect, but I'm also going to have soft edges, which is what I try to do in the beginning of the painting, because when as I'm working on it and removing the paint, um, that's when you leave all your hard edges, and I want to kind of save them for the focal point of my painting. Um, this is another interesting thing with uh, this green blue and the alizarin crimson. They, they really don't like each other at all. Enough. It's um, M A I M E R I B L U. Yeah, I think it's a French company. I don't know if you can see it, but like the the um, alizarin crimson is kind of fighting its way back in there, and it's almost leaving like um, like oh, these. Stringy lines. Um, and some of the heavier ones, like this uh, cobalt teal, like if you put them in thicker, they will push things out of their way. And again, leaving a nice soft edge. Um, and the other one is this manganese, too, also. Well, tends to push stuff out of the way. All right, well, that, that one's not doing it today. Why? But anyway, that's kind of what I do to, um, I'll kind of get a couple colors where I think they work together, but as they're drying, too, like this, there's like this striped effect that's happening across there. Um, and the other thing is if I kind of start off and pour a lot of things and let things mix for the longest time and hopefully when they start to dry right, then I hit them with the blow dryer. Um, How long does it take to dry? Um, well, when you use the blow dryer, not that long. And, and I've learned to not rely on air drying because as you can see here, as things are Maybe you can see a shine on this. Oh yeah. Some areas are, are dry mm -hmm. before others, and then you're going to have puddles, and then you're going to have edges, more than likely where you don't want them, and then they're there. So um, I kind of I've learned to, as things are starting to dry, then I'll just kind of dry them in place with the blow dryer. If you use the blow dryer. I use the low setting, and I'm, um, and and I also have learned to have the paper taped down, because otherwise your paper will shoot across the floor. <laughs> which is, if you if you use a low setting, and if you're not, if you move it around, and you know you hold the dryer high enough, you, I mean yeah, if you put it on a high speed, and directed it, you could you would move the paint for sure, and maybe that could, you know. You may want that. You know, you, I've never tried that. Lisa, can you wipe out some of that color while it's wet? Oh yeah. I mean, if, if um, if you hit the edge of it, it'll kind of reactivate it. Oh, that's right. You need to see this. Um, and sometimes when I'm something, when things are kind of semi-dry and I I want to keep working on them, I'll use this the water bottle and just kind of catch everything upside down and that leaves a little bit of a texture and you know also will reactivate certain areas and then maybe you know, it'll just start moving on you and then you just I just end up tilting the paper until it starts to look like something um, now again I'm, this these are just drops of paint this wasn't going to be anything but by hitting the water droplets on this, also kind of made this fun texture. You, know, you can just start letting stuff roll around. Um, and then when you get to the point where you're like, oh, I don't know, 
you can just take your and just get rid of it and start over. Just like that. So you don't have to worry about ever buying paper again. <laughs> And now, like some of your staining pigments will, they'll stain the paper, you know. But, um, you know, this is probably, yeah. And, and uh, I've been using indigo and that, that'll stain a little bit. And, but, I mean, not to the point where, and if you keep going over it with water and a little pressure, you'll be able to get back to the white of the paper, but I think the longer it stays on there, like if you know, if you've left this on here for a year, you probably won't be able to get it all up. But if you're going to paint darker, who cares? You know, it's still going to, you'll still be able to cover it up. So can you predict what effects you're going to get, or are they sort of always happy accidents? Um, you're, you're winging it. <laughs> I mean, I just, I could never paint the same thing twice on. There's too many variables. You have moving water. You have different ratios to paint. Like, there's never way you're ever going to be able to, I don't think you could duplicate it. I mean, the koi, it, it, they're a little bit, um, even then, you know, the water, the way you're just letting the water, I just try to get the water to swirl and end up looking good. And, um, to me, that's the hardest part, making sure that the water looks believable. So, I've got to start painting something for real. <laughs> What's the difference between using acrylic on that kind of paper versus regular traditional watercolor paint? I've never used acrylic on it. I don't know. I know. See, with that surface, they would react the same way. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if um, I don't. I've never worked with acrylic, so I don't really know. started doing oils like 10 years ago and um, I was really glad I learned watercolor first. I was like, oh, I can just fix it with an oil painting. How nice. Yeah. Okay. Did you stop painting the water? I go back and forth. I paint on regular watercolor paper, I paint on Yupo and, and oils and um, I would love to do pastel but I'm like, there's no more room. There's only so much more room in the brain. So um, I, I, I just couldn't take on them. And this, this case, you know, I'm still interested in all the, these three different things. So it's not like I'm bored yet. So what I did, instead of, I also work with a watercolor pencil um, when I paint on this paper to start my drawing, which, and my drawing is like, well, you'll see, it's nothing. It's like a circle. Um, because I know that where things are going to just happen, and it's just better to let it go, see what happens, um, knowing that you can, don't worry about hard edges in the beginning. Um, just try to get your lights and darks in the right spot so that at least the overall lights and darks. Um, or may, even more so that you, your darks are in the right spot because you can put your lights in anywhere you want. But um, I'm just for simplicity's sake, so I'm going to do just three fish kind of coming at you, and they're different sizes a little bit. Maybe that guy's going. This is watercolor pencil because it'll um, it'll dissolve with the paint and. Um, I think regular paper, uh, you would see your regular pencil mark otherwise. And I know that the fish are not going to actually be in this right spot, but it's just kind of like my, a guideline um, placement. Can you erase it? 
Yeah, I mean, this, this would just erase with a damp towel. Okay. Yeah. Oops. Um, I just kind of want this guy over more. So this is a pair there. And then maybe he can be dark against light or something. So I have a lot of um, I guess like the one the, you know I one person I learned oil from she used a lot of the uh, food analogies for painting just so that so my version of that for this is um, it's like making a stir fry you have to have all of your things all your chopped vegetables, all your garlic diced, and everything ready to go because it's all going right in here and it has to interact really quick. So that's why I start with a lot of the blues, the background, so I kind of start with a lot of that. And then and that's why I have a drop it off here because I'm going to get paint everywhere. When you're all done, do you spray it with some kind of Yes. Yes. When it's completely done, I spray it with um, Prylon Mix, a Kmar varnish, and um, I give it, you know, like what it says on the can, um, two or three coats, and then it's sealed. Okay. Can you avoid glass? I'm sorry? Can you then frame it without glass? Oh, no. No, I would. Whether it was uh, whether you would frame it without glass, um, no, it still has to be under glass. Okay. this a little bit. I want to just give this just a spritz because I want to have a little bit more water here just to, as a vehicle for things to flow. Is this in the right spot? Okay. This is a little too thick. I use the, the blue green at the top. Oh yeah, you could use whatever color you know, I would just you know, we, if you wanted to try this, I would not I would not go out and buy any new paint. I would just get the paper and let your use all the paints that you have right now and then just you know, put them on a piece of paper and see what they do. Because I'm sure you'll, you'll get some really interesting things given um, the different paint properties.
And now, like the light, the, it's getting a little too light at the top, so just, um, you know, tip the board and get some of the darks to go back up that way. That's mostly experience. Yeah, you know, you just, I, it's kind of like just, you kind of just have to, um, not really have an idea how it's going to turn out. And well, other than I know that I want, like, kind of a, like, maybe a fish here, maybe a fish there, or maybe a fish there. But, and I'm hoping that if I can get the, this dark along this edge to, so that he can come forward, you know, that's like, that's about as far as I've really thought about it. I don't want to lose any of these fun edges. Um, because I think that's I think that's what makes this um, surface so unique is that like I could never get these effects on regular paper. Cobalt teal. That's a cobalt teal. And again, that's you know the effect of that paint pushes the other ones away. Is that a brown brush that you use? Yeah. Well, th this is um, uh, Daniel Smith makes. It's called a cat's tongue, and I think they're going back to just making paint. So. Um, if you want it, anything from them besides their paint, order it now. You're adding alizarin? This is the alizarin, yeah. I just looked at what I started and I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. Add that in. In this part, I, I always try to at least locate the eyes so I kind of have, I don't lose, they can change if they need to be, but it kind of helps me not lose where I'm putting these fish because they're still a little undefined at this point. It's, it's drying right now, and I, I want to get as much soft edges in it as possible. The, the, other, the second part of it where you're doing the detail, that's where you just, it's, that's the boring part. Uh, this, is, this is like the fun part, you know, because it's like, it's so dynamic. It's constantly moving, and, you know, it's like all the possibilities are still in there. It's just up to me not to screw it up. I like all the all of a sudden like that whole dramatic line there. And if it looks too severe, then you just tilt it down. Oh, I'm gonna soften that. Um, that's that's kind of I like the this dark in that, and I know I can pull him forward. He's this is a little too strong here, so I'll soften that. Um, but it's nice and fluid, so that's what we're trying to get. Because I, I can't get that afterwards. You can't paint over this 
that's the drawback of it. You cannot really glaze. If you paint over this, you're going to lift what's underneath. So um, you can you can remove paint, but going over like to make an area darker, it's not that easy. So now, while things are still wet, I take a this is a half inch flat, and I can kind of if I put enough pressure on it, I can really kind of start to carve out parts of these fish. And I'm just working with a damp brush. Still trying to just hold on to some soft, like that soft edge there. I don't mind that. I can clean it up later if I have to, but I don't. Like I kind of want these two to be more attention getting, and then this is secondary. So he's got to get darker over there. Just a little bit. Well, you put it in the drawer. <laughs> I have I have ten flat file, you know, a ten drawer flat file, and when you get to the point where you're kind of like, then it's just then you put it away. Like I I do that in regular watercolor too. I don't the whole the the finishing part is starting is easy. Finishing is hard because um, every painting is you know, like putting together a puzzle. You know, you, you think you know what you're going to do in the beginning, and then 10 minutes in, you're just like, I don't know why I thought this was a good idea. <laughs> I, I thought this was going to be easy. Why did you, why did you start with you? How did you figure oh, it? you know, I just, somebody in my local group demonstrated on it, and um, she, she was using it, she started doing it like a monotype, where you, she put paint on the plexiglass and then just pulled it up and you know that produced some interesting textures and of course it was still wet and interactive so um, and I think at the time I, don't know, I, I guess I was, maybe I was still working out of the house or maybe I was working on anyway I just remember thinking like when she did that and then started manipulating it I was just well, that's something I could do at 7 o'clock at night after dinner. Like, you know, just pull something up and say, hey, what's, what's this going to be? And, um, yeah, I, you know, and, and the safety factor. If it doesn't turn out, you just wipe it off. And, and, you know, you can just, and you can go in there with the plexiglass, and you don't even know what you're going to do to begin with. So you can just start painting. It, and so it was just like this whole thing of like, oh, I could just go in my, put my paints out, put some on plexiglass, pull up a piece, you know, and just like say, hey, what's this going to be? Without even thinking about what do I want to paint? And, and I just, I don't know, I don't even know where the, the fish came out of, but um, I thought it, you know, I thought it was kind of nice and lend itself to like a underwater thing. Okay. And this is, um, I want to put to show like a little bit of reflected light under him. If I can do this green and bright, make it look like he's get the underside a little bit. Do you raise tropical fish? No, I um I've been to a few museums, you know, aquariums and. Uh, you know, for the koi, friends have ponds, and um, actually I got some really good pictures while at a Japanese tea garden out in San Francisco with the koi.
All right. They got a little too uh, bright under there, so while it's still wet, I'm just going to tone it down a little bit with the that was a little too strong. So again, while it's still wet, you can still manipulate it and move it around, and you're not leaving any lines. But up here is all dry. It's, I don't know if you can see the sheen there, but like at some point at the bottom of this, it's still wet. And just gonna get a Are you teaching anywhere, Lisa? I'm teaching at um. <laughs> yeah, we recognize that. One. <laughs> I'm, I'm teaching here. No, I, I'm, in April, I'm I'm at the. Uh, the Bourbon Art School, we're, do, we're gonna work on this and do florals. And then I have a couple of workshops there, and I didn't bring any promotional, <laughs> I didn't bring any postcards or anything. I was like, I don't know what, a, but yeah, uh, it's on my website, which is www.lisabud.com. And, uh, but I'm teaching on regular paper a couple places in April. Um, cityscapes in my local group and then uh, beach scenes down in Atlanta County. So anyway, this is the boring part of the demo. Uh, if anybody has any questions. Yeah, Alan, you can get up and props up a few jokes for anybody. Boy, can you stand in for him? No. <laughs> I don't have a little black book of Lou. He's got a black book. It's a little touch there. It must be like 40 pages or stuff. Right. Well, this will this will only take like a couple minutes. Um, what else can I tell you about you, Bo? I have a question. Sure. Um, is it your class? Yeah. Is your practice the paper and the use of moving the paper the same for the world or the use of the Well, I might. And that part, I might. I'll probably like paint. The bloom of the flower, okay. but like at least to kind of lock it in, and then not, but not precisely. But then what I like to do is, um, I gotta pay attention here. Um, like I'll, I'll hit, I'll start the background very soft, but I don't mind if part of that, like on the poppy, if any of the red blooms into the uh, the background. Because you can go back and get um, like while part of it dries, I can actually go back in and detail the bottom of the flower if I need to. If that makes any sense. Did you study art as a profession, or how did you come to this? I'm sorry. Did you study art as a profession? How did you come to this? Well, I had this great idea of going to art school. Um, my parents thought that was not so great, but um, so I ended up going for interior design at FIT, and then that led me to um, a couple classes of architectural working drawings, which led me to working for architects for about, I don't know, 25 years. So uh, now I'm in art school. This is my art school, and it's fun. And it's you know, it's hard, but it's, you know, it's what I wanted to do. But yeah, I got eclipsed by, um, by the wonderful world of CAD computers and CAD drawing. And uh, I was still drawing with a pencil. And these two architects I was uh, still working for, uh, you know, one was like 70. And I thought, you know what? <laughs> I'm running out of architects to work for because we're all on computers. I, I do a lot of um, outdoor work um, art shows. I do about 20 a year. And um, this year, you know, since I've retired from architecture and now I just have this job, um, like just this job, like it's so easy. Um, I have been a member of the Sal Magundi Club for. I don't know, three or four years, I've never been able to take advantage of all their things that they have to offer. So this year, I, I decided I'm going to focus on that for, for you know, 
make it a priority. And I entered their their, you know, their small paintings, which is going on now, their thumb boxes exhibit. And um, they're selling so many paintings. I mean, they're all small, which is great for Christmas, but it's just like that. Well, that was a nice surprise. So. And they have a, you know, a couple other, like they have a black and white exhibit. And I've always wanted to do it. And I'm just like, finally, I don't have to worry about the phone ringing from architects and I can just concentrate on my schedule. With the UPO? With the UPO? I haven't done any with the UPO, um, but the woman that I have, that demonstrated, she's done these beautiful, um, forest scenes with snow on the trees, you know, where she's removing the paint to have the effects of the snow, and also waterfalls. I mean, she, you know, I don't think she has a website, but she's done some really interesting things, completely different than this. Yeah. What's that? Lee Fricky? She's um, out of Little Lake Harbor, down by May. I um I seal it first and then I frame it like a regular watercolor. Like that one there. It's you know it's No. No. I mean I ha I actually have um you can scratch it, you know, because I have and I've had one that's been hanging up to see if it'll fade. You know, it's just been hanging, you know, on my wall unprotected and it hasn't faded. And that's been like eight years. This is the thing about the puddle. <laughs> well, that's just going to dry in place. Like I said, I don't think I could duplicate it. So what is this is a duplicate. This is um this is um this is supposed to be step two of that. The colors are a little bit different, but it's a general idea. There's still three fish, um, different textures, but uh, anyway, this is. Where kind of just have to see what happens. Um, now again, what I was saying, where by removing the paint, I'm going to get these hard edges. Um, so I I want to put them where I really need them. Like here, I like the way that this shape is here. Um, I don't think I need to call much more attention to that. I like that this is kind of hidden in the water. But I want to make these two kind of come a little bit more forward. So I'm not working with a large brush at this point. I'll be working with like the, the these half inch flats um, are really good for getting an edge. And, and then this is um, number eight round is also pretty good. Lisa, how long has this one been dry? Um, what's today? Sunday. I think I did this Friday. So, like two days. But you, I mean, if I could start, once that's dry, you can just start working on it. You don't have to wait. And again, like I can really erase everything, or I don't, maybe you can see it here. You know, I can actually come down and take it all the way out, or by using less pressure, you can kind of just drag it 
and not, you know, not really, it's just by how much pressure you're applying. So you don't have to, if you don't want to get back to the white of the paper, you don't have to. Can you add blue in to uh, the cover of the white? Um, yeah, like where this area is wet, like if I thought that's, if that's not, if it's too light, while it's still wet, I can always, you know, drop some color back in. And again, like if I don't want that to be a hard edge, I, I may just hit it with a blow dryer and help it dry a little bit quicker. Um, it's a lot of just um, getting a feel for it. Now this, I want to move this guy a little bit closer to him, so I'm just going to remove the paint just to give him a bigger profile. And I like the idea that this is like this lost edge of this fish that's going to, he's coming alongside and that's going to define him against the light against the dark. And the other thing you have to be careful with is your wet hand. But like I'm, I'm very careful not to try not to touch the paper at this point with my other hand. So, um, yeah, and I'm usually... I have paint on all over me too. You know, actually, I'm not, because I don't want to drip water on it. I want to be able to control it. But So if it's damp, I can just kind of just draw with it. So moving him that way, I can also put a dark in for where his mouth is. And I'm just kind of, yeah, I know I'll be cleaning all this stuff up later, but it is a way of just kind of just getting a little bit more shape to them. And a lot of times, like I, I'm, I really like the way that he's kind of disappearing. I don't want to, I really don't want to call too much attention to him, but I do have to fix his face. It's not looking too healthy at this point. I was here. Or did you guys see me do the fish before? Yeah. <coughs> All right, now I have an uneven eyeball. Uh, so. Too much uh, arsenic in the water, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Call the DEP. The EPA. I don't really concentrate on any one thing. Um, do I concentrate on fish? Um, I don't. I, I I really like the cityscapes. I've been like there's just and there's like so many other things I want. I've been doing a lot of marshes of the area where I live. Um, a lot of places that I have a lot of places that used to be there and on the marshlands that are no longer there since Sandy. Um, things 
are a lot different now. But yeah, I have all these, you know, the old buildings out on the dock roads. And a lot of times, like if just driving around there at sunset, the light's just really neat, especially in this time of year, um, November and December, because it's really low. I've written down that I made these guys with the lizard and crimson, but this is actually this orange color. So I'm going to drop some in here while this is wet. They have orange on him, and he needs a little more orange. And so does this guy. But I dropped that into a wet area so it'll still get a soft edge. Well, you don't have to because, yeah, you can get it back. I mean, that's the one thing, like, you don't have to worry about saving your whites with this paper. Um, it on this. I mean, you, you could do that to get a, you know, like a, a bubbly effect, but um, I find that by throwing like the water or the, um, like even like a little bit of soap in it will kind of cause things to break up. It just leads um, to like a more softer effect. Like the bubble wrap kind of leaves a more of a stamped effect. I know, um, I don't know if she's working on it anymore, but Nancy Barch, I took a workshop with her. She used to work on this and, and did more of a graphics style with it. Um, and we were doing like a lot of textures with it, but I just found I wanted to go back to this, you know. Um, that, I'm gonna hit that with the blow dryer. Like, I, since that was darker than what was on top, below it, it was okay that I lifted it. Um, but I don't want it to be that hard of an edge, so I'm gonna just dry that in place. I mix them what? Do you mix your colors because the different colors have different properties and I are going to use the tube. Oh, they're all from the tube that are on here. Right. Yeah. I, 
I don't think I could start. I, I don't think I could get into mixing paint. Um, now I, I just you find your favorites, um, and I've been really happy with the Windsor Newton and um, Daniel Smith colors. And I don't even know where I bought. I have three tubes of this my Mary manufacturer, and I don't even know why. Um, uh, or some, I was in a workshop and somebody recommended it. But yeah, I mean, I love this green blue, and I, it's, I've, I used it on even on when I used it on regular watercolor paper. It has so much strength that, like, if I wanted to get a bounce, a reflected light, it's if I put a t you know a heavy amount of that in on regular paper, it'll push things back. Yeah, but I don't. I don't think the Windsor will push. It, yeah. it, it doesn't have that that push factor. Cause I have I have a tube of that too. I have to spend a lot of time figuring out how to. And a lot of times it's how much how much water to pigment. Like if you have a, a really heavy yeah. mixture. So it's yeah, it's all um, that, that that whole how much water and paint consistency you're working with is always just um, kind of a random factor. What's that? Well, in, also you don't need to use as much water. Like you, you because it, you don't absorb any, nothing's being absorbed into the paper, so you can actually work with less water. And yeah, same thing with regular watercolor paper. You just have to, you know, kind of make the mark and leave it. faces. I still don't like the way he still needs more. He still looks a little funny. it um, kind of dry evenly versus like um, it's not a completely flat surface so I'll get like actually right here I don't know if you can see I've got a, a dot a big circle of paint which I really don't want to call ten that'll leave a hard edge so I'm gonna get low speed um, yeah just as long as it kind of dries as one like very evenly, you're not going to have a hard, you won't have that hard edge. But if you let it just dry in place, it's going to dry a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and then you'd end up with this hard line that is always in the wrong spot. That it, I'm sorry? No, I don't think, I think it just, it, it's, what it loses is that wetness. 
Um, yeah, you, you def but I don't think it, it doesn't dry lighter. You just don't have, it doesn't have that glossy look anymore. You might even be able to get it on a roll, but the standard sheets are 20 by 26. It's a little bit smaller than stock watercolor paper. And then, um, like these little tablets are nice, you know, just they're like 9 by 12 sheets. Because um, actually, to try working on this, it's best to work like start small, start on a small piece of paper because, you know, it's. <laughs> The water pigment is so much different than uh, regular paper, just to get a handle on how much water and pigment you need. Um, but I think they might have double size sheets too, the maybe 40 by 26. Sharp again? That would be great. Yes. That would scare no, you, you wanted me to do the talking shark last time. I know. It would scare everybody to death to see this thing coming out of the dark background. Open mouth, you know, oh boy. Typically, like, I guess, you know, there's always one fish that's just going to give me a headache, and it's this guy. <laughs> yeah, it's like, why can't you just look right? Well, the other one that I wiped off was probably four months old, or it doesn't go into the paper, which is, you know, it's good and it's bad. Like if I if I put my hand down here and it's wet, I'm gonna leave a nice big thumbprint. So you you know, there's 
advantages and disadvantages well, to it. Suppose you wanted to darken part of the water. Easily just add more paint, or it would upset everything around. Yeah, I mean you you can't you. That's why I try that, that whole. I spend a lot of time with the under while it's wet into wet, and then and at a certain point, you know, you just have to let it dry. Um, and also in that initial stage, it's best not to work with too many different colors because they are kind of all going to mix together and you don't you want to still keep them at least start with colors that are compatible like um, just so that you don't get more of a well I mean if you wanted a dull effect you could just keep adding the opposites but um, sometimes you know too many notes doesn't help been against a white maybe I put that anyway after the background was dry and but then yeah the reflection I, I made the you know, I removed the paint from the umbrellas and then uh, the sidewalk or the the crosswalk was also um, by lifting the paint and I might have put like their reflections down first and then dragged through it as it was before it dried <laughs> I do think so. It's um yeah, it's they just this is always like a work in progress. It's very hard to see how you know predict how they're gonna turn out. And and you know, towards the end it's just this is probably at this point I would put it in the drawer because um it's better to look at something for me, it's better for me to come back and look at something like twenty four hours later and say I think I just, my eyes get tired and I just stop, um, or it just gets too familiar. And you know the parts where you're not sure of and then they, they start to mount up and there gets to be a lot of parts that you're not sure of. And then it's just like, well, you know what? Before I get to the, before I do something I can't undo like that. Right. No, I can't undo that. Just dry. I just hit it with a, I just dropped the, pop of water right here. Um, yeah, it's just uh, it's just best to put it away and uh, come back like 24 hours later. 
And a lot of times, when I'll, I, most of the times, I'm, I'll start a couple of these just uh, because that also helps you come back and look at something with a clear eye from looking at the other one. And I also, I also forgot to bring my mats. Usually, like at this point, at this stage, I'm usually putting things in the mat, in a mat around it, just to kind of check the composition or work with the mirror too. I'm just looking at it from reverse, so it's like... But that helps you just see areas that are, like, that definitely needs to be fixed. I just added a little bit of a tone to the front because they looked they looked a little too stark. I just wanted to soft, just make that white drop out a little bit. So is it, and what, what's my time now? 
Any moment. Okay. Yeah. As soon as what? As the food comes in, it's officially over. Oh. You can stop. You can stop whatever you're ready. All right. Well, I just I'm gonna start drying these things. Um, so they don't. The white on the edges. Where you have? Are you when you mat it, you just mat that out? Oh yeah. I I. I yeah, yeah, it would probably be like that. Um, I meant to grab them at the last minute. I forgot. I had them ready to go. What's that? Up in here? No, I would just, you know, I would, I would not. Um, yeah, I would bring the mat up for sure. I would probably get them like print the image, like because if I mean yeah you you do have to um, you do have to you know protect the paper. Um, yeah yeah. Yeah, and I, even after sealing it, I mean, it just, it, I know that you can scratch the surface of it. I mean, it, it just really needs to be protected under glass. But. Have you used anything to scratch it? I, I, I mean, you could scratch it with your fingernail. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah. You could probably just do it with, the, with your fingernail. Do you use, like, yeah, you could. Um, the rigor, I, I haven't really done that many um, grasses with this. I mean, I. I or some kind of calligraphy, you know, any kind of fine line, what would you do um, to I usually work with the number eight. I mean, I, and just draw, like. Um, yeah, yeah. Because I think the rigor, you know, it, it, it's so long that it's just going to, it, yeah, it bends a little bit. No, it's dry.
Uh, the first one you should have a blue ticket for, that's a three. And the second raffle is for the print. Excuse me, you're in. Yes. I know you're from the I know you're from the I know, but you know, you, I used to see you at art shows. Yeah. And I have one of your little I have one of your little arms. 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 One Otherwise, they would be dead fish. No, no, I haven't joined that yet. Yeah. 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 One other thing yeah. I failed to mention at the end is another one. Yeah. I'm really happy with that. Did you that. get your oh, raffle yeah. ticket? Because he didn't want to see you. Take the picture for this. Look at your raffle ticket. I'm going to see you. Behind the door. Yeah, spray varnish. The pylon base is both blue.